From introduction to biomedical research, we reached the stage of data analysis. Of course, there are statisticians to help you in data analysis. They are graduates and postgraduates in statistics. But you should know the basic minimum things or the basic essentials regarding data analysis. One is to know whether the, your statistician is going in the right direction and also, of course, to get a pass in biomedical research examination. So, I will tell you the basic minimum or the practical tips in data analysis and please study that. And this data analysis cannot be completed in a one or two classes. It needs a long period of time. So, this can be better written as overview of uh, data analysis. First and foremost element is identification of the study type. I think it was already described in previous class. I will tell summarize in once more. So, uh, that is why you write your data analysis plan along with your protocol. So, you have to go to, through the objectives and uh, the research question, the methodology, everything. And uh, depending upon the nature of your research question and objective, you can divide the study into uh, two types. One, it is a descriptive study. Uh, if there is only one group, okay. And if there is a comparative group, it is an analytical study. So, in descriptive group, there is only one group. One group, there is no comparison. And for analytical studies, there is comparison between two groups. And if it is a descriptive study, that is only one group, okay, one group. And in analytical study, there are two groups. Uh, if it is a descriptive study, think of the study outcome and whether you are going for an acute one or if you are going for a chronic one. And in acute, for example, uh, you want to study on the uh, incidence of acute diarrheal disease in children. So, that is an acute condition and in that, Ideally, the study type is either a cohort study or a surveillance and you are finding out the incidence. Okay, and if it is a chronic disease, it is better in a descriptive analysis for chronic disease, it is always better to go with a cross-sectional survey. find out you will find out the prevalence so if you uh, remember this this analysis will be very easy for you so descriptive go uh, depending on the outcome look whether it is an acute or chronic if acute it is always either a cohort or a surveillance and you find out the incidence and in chronic condition you go for a cross-sectional survey and you are going out, going to find out the prevalence. Analytical study design, that is, that is, that means there are two groups to compare. Again, you divide that into uh, acute and chronic. Uh, and in acute, find out whether it is a frequently happening uh, condition or it is a rare condition. Okay. Frequent or rare. An acute frequent condition, it is always better to go with a cohort study. Cohort study and uh, what will you look in there? Either relative risk or risk ratio. Okay. And if it is rare condition, uh, how will you divide that into uh, frequent and rare? Uh, usually we take the uh, previous prevalence. If it is more than 5 percentage, we take it as um, frequent condition or less than 5 percentage prevalence, we take it as a rare disease. And in rare condition, it is better to go with a case control study. And we look for the odds ratio. 
Okay, this is in a case of analytical study design with acute. And in analytical study design which is chronic condition, uh, frequent, happening frequently or rare. Chronic and frequent uh, go with an analytical cross-sectional study. Okay, cross-sectional analytical. And what we will do there? We get the prevalence ratio. And if it is a rare condition, again it is go with a, either a prevalence survey or go with a case control. And again you get the, either a prevalence ratio or you get the odds ratio. Okay. So this is in short depending upon the study type, deciding on the data analysis plan. Uh, one another terminology you, you want to remember in this regard is dependent and independent variable. So dependent variable is actually the outcome of interest. And the independent variable is otherwise called the exposure variable. I will tell you with an example. Uh, I want to, I am doing a study to determine the effect of effect of age and sex on obesity. So here the obesity is depending upon this age and sex. So obesity is the outcome. So that becomes the dependent variable. And this age and sex become the independent variable. Okay. So that is now I think it is clear now. So the independent and the dependent variables. And after identification of the uh, study type, it is to identify main variables. You should know what are the outcome measures variable, you, you should know what are the exposure variables. And also you should have a knowledge of third factors like confounders and effect modifiers. And also uh, identify the variables for subgroup analysis. And after that you should be familiar with your data and uh, um, the components, the descriptive details and also check the data set for uh, missing value, skip patterns, etc., which I already explained along with the data management. Then you should know the study population uh, very well, the baseline characters, the demographic details. Then uh, if there are two groups for analytical study, you should know that also. Then the exposure and outcome association. Have a very good uh, understanding of the um, association between exposure and outcome. That is, you can get that uh, knowledge by looking at a priori hypothesis or based on previous studies or depending on your own study design. Then make two-way tables if needed. These two-way uh, empty tables, uh, you should create two-way empty table so that it will be very easy during the time of data analysis also. And these two-way tables are explained along with the cross-sectional studies, case control studies and also with the cohort studies and conduct advanced analysis and always uh, remember that plan the analysis at the st uh, study plan stage itself. Always avoid a post hoc analysis because it will reduce the validity of your study and there will be lot of confusion will happen uh, if you are going planning for a post hoc analysis. Especially you will be forced to do a data drenching also. What is the data drenching? That is uh, from the data you will manipulate it or misuse your data to get a pattern that will create a um, statistically significant association. You will be forced to do that data drenching. So always plan your uh, analysis at the time of study design or making a study protocol itself. And uh, go step by step. So in a data analysis, the steps coming up. One is uh, recoding. 
Then comes uh, descriptive analysis. That is, uh, that is uh, looking for the frequency uh, pattern of your variables. And then comes the analytic stage. So uh, these are the stages of any analysis plan. First is recoding. Next is uh, looking for the frequency distribution. And third is looking for a measure of association. And after that you can go whether to a uh, univariate analysis or a stratified analysis or a multivariate analysis. What are these? These are the three types of analysis usually done. And uh, the univariate analysis is the simplest form. And in that, you are analyzing one variable at a time. For example, you are given the height of 100 students in a class. And if you are calculating the mean and standard deviation of height of these children, that is an example of univariate. You mean one, one variable analyzed at a time. Very simple. And what is stratified analysis? That is, you are uh, analyzing different outcomes or you are stratifying the uh, outcomes into multiple uh, strata or you are dividing the outcome into multiple strata and analyzing. And this is the most efficient way of dealing with confounders. I'll tell you with an example. Um, a study is planned on the effect of coffee drinking with the gastroesophageal reflux disease. Okay, to find out the association between coffee drinking and gastroesophageal reflux disease. And here, uh, smoking is coming as a confounder affecting both coffee drinking and GERD. So what will you do in a stratified analysis is that we will divide this uh, coffee drinkers into smokers and non-smokers. So a different tables will be made for smokers and non-smokers. That is they are made into different strata. And then this analysis is done to find out the association between this and the GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. So that is an example of a stratified analysis. Okay. And multivariate analysis, we use the logistic regression model. And this is usually done if there is more than two variables, association between exposure and outcome with the more than two variables, we go for a multivariate analysis. Okay, so these are the uh, basic things or the practical tips, uh, tips for data analysis because you should know this, then only you can um, find out whether the statistician is doing good or going in the correct way or also at the time of writing the study protocol, you can, you have, there is a part for data analysis and you have to write all this depending upon your study type. Okay, and remember these seven steps of any data analysis. Thank you.